Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Alex. And on today's Bike Matters video, we're looking at the top five new sports bikes for 2019. So first up is the BMW S1000RR. This bike was first released, released in 2009, so it is its 10th year anniversary. Yeah. So with the redesign, BMW wanted three new things out of here. It wants to be a second quicker on track, 10 kilograms lighter, which they didn't quite achieve, and also easy to control. Now, the second quicker on track, it depends on the track, it's a bit of a relative. Yeah, of course, of course. The 10 kilogram lighter um, target, they got 5.3, but even then, on this kind of bike, which has been trimmed down for the last decade anyway, that's a lot to pull out of nowhere, yeah. really. Uh, and then also easy to control. So imagine they've got all the wider assists on it, anti-wheeling, anti-spin, traction control, ABS, everything is like that is on it. So it's probably got a full electronic package. Um, <laughs> It's just shy of 204 brake horsepower, it's 203.8, which is a lot, it's a huge Same amount, amount yeah. and that's at 13,500 revs, so optimum uh, rev limit for it as well. Um, it's got a flex frame, so it's comfortable riding position, slimmer, transfers load more, um, bearing capacity to the engine, so there's so many different things on this new bike that they haven't had in the past, which all of a sudden they've just decided to put on, really. They, yeah, they've really like sort of stepped it up from the previous one that they had, because. A lot of people were expecting it just to sort of follow the same same really sort of lines that it was already, but then they've changed the frame, they've changed the engine with the shift cam. So they've done quite a lot here to bring out a new bike for 2019. Exactly, and I think a lot of it is based on their BSB uh, oh, yeah, Superbike, so incorporating that into yeah. their road bike or track bike, whichever version you get, is a good idea to be fair, yeah. it'll sell. No, absolutely, it's looking like a really good bike, it's one we're definitely smart, excited for for 2019. So next up is the Ducati Panigale V4R. I mean, this one's probably not even a road bike because no, it's just it's it's an obscene amount of power and it's just going to be so quick. Um, I mean, out of the box, it's going to have 221 brake horse, which is, again, exactly. like, it's just ridiculous. And then you stick a, a Krapovich can on it and it goes to 234 brake horse, which is, again... That's MotoGP yeah, power. Yeah, you're literally looking huge. at just buying a MotoGP bike and just getting it on the road. Uh, carbon wings, of course, on this one, so you're going to at least get some downforce at the front end, so it's not going to be as squirrely at the front. I think the statistic behind it was at 160, 170 miles an hour, you're going to have a 30 kilogram load yeah. from the wind or the pressure from those wings on the front, which is insane. Yeah, just keeping you down at that sort of high speed is just insane. Again, on this one, they've gone for like everything for the engine. I mean, the red line is 16,000 RPM and the Gears for one to five are going to like max at that, but then with the top gear for gear six, it mm. goes to 16 and a half thousand. That is that limit. optical rev limit though, it's about 15,000, yeah. which is the optimum uh, rev range. But even then, like you were saying, Ducati have pumped everything into it. They've got all their uh, Ducati ABS traction control, yeah. slide, um, wheelie, uh, brake and launch control, pit limiter. Yeah, it's got the pit limiter on it. So this is a full race bike. Um, we don't know much because it hasn't really been used. The only time it's been used is by Scott Redding and uh, I think it was Brooksy over in Hareth on a private test. Yeah. And even then, Scott Redding's lap that he put in, not pushing it, first time on a superbike, was only a second behind Jonathan Ray's lap record at Hareth on a world superbike. So whatever Ducati have Just done to this is ridiculous. This I is think a I did, to be fair, bike. see uh, Redding's video on YouTube where he was just going around the track and you could see the smile on his face. Yeah. Like he came off the bike and he was just like... Yeah, yeah and he yeah, said he hasn't had that for years. After a few tough seasons in GP yeah. for Ducati to make a super bike he's never ridden before yeah. and to be that fast is phenomenal. So I cannot wait to see this, see this bike out properly. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, this one's also got multimedia connectivity, so they are still going to be allowing road bike capabilities. <laughs> <laughs> so if you really want to go for it on the road, then... Around the track, yeah, go on, stick on heart, go on. Go on. <laughs> So next up, another Italian manufacturer, the Aprilia RSV4000, no, sorry, the 1100 factory. Yeah. This has got all new sorts to it. Again, it's not as powerful as a V4R, but the thing is you're gonna be able to ride this one on the road. Even then, it's 214 brake horsepower. Yeah. That's a joke. We spoke about this after it being unveiled at Icona. It's, it's so quick. Um, red line and sixth gear at uh, 13, just over 13 and a half thousand revs. Um, and it's just their newest range top of this thing, beats anything they've ever made besides their GP bike. The factory comes with an Akrapovich exhaust, so out, rather than using their big stock exhaust, which are huge old heavy things, 
they're using this, so it's a lot lighter. You can change the position of the engine in the frame as well. So yeah. whether you want more rear loading or front loading when you're braking, so if you are going into it and it feels like the rear is coming through a lot, yeah, you I can move the engine, which is a huge part of the weight of the bike. So they've done all sorts with this um, swing arm pivot, uh, height and suspension, you can adjust all of that. You're essentially making this your own with yeah. the full electronics base. Which is package. great for a Prelude to actually give you the sort of capability to start adjusting things, even tiny amounts, just to make it fit you as the rider. So, you know, you, you want to have the engine moved a little bit, you want to have the suspension done here, the pivot height, mm -hmm. you know, everything just moving about, making it your own bike, as you say. It's just... It's one of those things, they've always had a super bike out, but they were very quiet for quite a few years. Yeah. Um, and then I think with the uh, KTM pulling out their RC8 saying that there's no point in having sports bikes on the road, and a lot of other manufacturers then pushing theirs up a bit, yeah. they've followed suit and they have made uh, a work of art with yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, it's this fantastic. I would say this is going to be potentially one of the best bikes I've ever mm -hmm. made, to be honest. I mean, it just seems like they've really hit the nail on the head on this one and just they're going to be making a bike that just out of the box is just perfect. Ready to ride yeah. and you don't need to do anything, you don't need accessories with the Akrapovich as standard, you don't need to go into a dealership, yeah. buy a whatever 15, 18 grand bike and then go spend two, three grand on accessories, it comes with it so really yeah, exactly. good job from Aprilia here. And then next up here we've got the Kawasaki ZX-10R, so the Ninja. Now Kawasaki are going to have three models of this one. The one we're going to be really talking about is the ZX-10R, so the base model. But they do also have the ZX-10RR, which is like a limited 500 run. It's going to have track tune suspension, 600 higher or 600 revs per minute higher is the rev limit. And it's going to about one brake horsepower more. Of course, because it's a limited run, you're going to be getting a bit more of a sort of special production bike. But then even on top of that, there's a ZX-10R SE. So it's going to be sort of in the middle of the two. It does add the, I think it's a Kawasaki, what's it called again? Electronic suspension? Oh That's yeah, like the KECS yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, you can adjust all of that. That's and then it's going to have some self-healing paint on that one, so mm -hmm. it's similar to the, the H2 that they've got there with the self-healing paint. Still can't get which, my head around that, to yeah, be honest. It's but... just <laughs> baffling to me, but there we go. So the ZX-10R is going to be something, that they're going to have 200 brake horsepower on the base model. Mm -hmm. So they're still going to be really going for it on the Ninjas, this one and the quick shifter for up and down as well, the Kawasaki quick shift here, and aggressive high lift cams. So okay, they've got aggressive, yeah. quite aggressive. Like this is gonna be anyway. another bike here where it's gonna sell well, it's gonna be great on the road and on the track as well. So it's something really to keep an eye out for. There's also a uh, valve actu actuation um, finger follower or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what they're doing here, but it's going to be reducing the mass of the system by 20%. That's huge. Which is massive. That is huge. So it'll be able to cope with sort of maximum revs a bit more reliably. So you're going to be able to get right to the limit of the bike and it's going to still be able to just keep going for that limit. So again, it's, it's what they've done with this, especially the SC, is they've designed it around Johnny Ray's Superbike but somehow kept it road legal. These things are very quick. Kawasaki have always been quick. They've always been trading out new bikes. And when they brought out the H2 and the H2R, people were amazed by it. But rather than putting that sort of money into these prototype machinery that not many people can afford to run or even buy, they've put it into their ZX-10Rs, the Ninjas, which have been around for gosh knows yeah. how long. So with the quick shift, um, the adjustable suspension, everything. It's going to be a user-friendly bike, very fast still, but still not taking the fun out of riding. You've still got to yeah. do a lot of it yourself, so quality job from Kawasaki. Yeah, no, I think Kawasaki are quite a lot about that, so they're not going to be taking everything out of the rider's hands mm -hmm. in terms of the electronic assists. They're going to like having the rider feeling like they're on the road with the bikes, and that's, you see a lot of that with their Z series. They always love having sort of not bare minimum in terms of the electronic stuff, but they do like having... Still boots on the ground yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, You're exactly. doing it yourself. It's not all done for you, basically. And I think there's a lot of riders out there do enjoy that sort of style where it's just like they know it's them and the bike and it's not a load of electronics in between. So another bike really to look out for for 2019, I reckon. And last up, a pretty special one. It's the Kimco Super Next. We've seen this in the flesh now. Um, we're based an electric sports bike, nothing wrong with that. You've got the energy because you've got all sorts under that sort of category, yeah. but it's a manual engine. We don't really understand the, how it works, the, the insides of it. It's 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds. So even with the, the manual part, you'd expect that on a, an automatic one, but on a geared one, that's very quick. 0 to 155 miles an hour 
in 10.9 seconds. Yeah. So again, plenty quick enough. The Super Next will have this active acoustic motor. Uh, we've already saw us spoken about it maybe. Yeah, they did briefly mention it with us as well. Exactly, so it provides the soundtrack to your ride. Yeah. You can change the sound of the engine. So the electric bikes are very much a whistle at the moment, which I like the sound of, but some people still want to hear the bike. To be able to have this sort of opportunity to go onto your phone and be like, you know what, today I don't really want my bike sounding like this, I want it sounding like that. It's just, mm -hmm. it's insane. I just don't understand how they can make the engine connect to your phone, change the sort of output of the sound, depending on how you're riding mm -hmm. it as well. It's just incredible. And as you say as well, the speed is just going to be insane from an electric bike. Obviously, we know electric motors are going to be a, just torque instantly. Mm -hmm. But for this to have a manual gearbox and also that sort of just torque instantly, mm -hmm. It's just That's incredible. the thing is what people are saying is when you're coming out of corners and a lot of the electric bikes or well, with uh, an actual fuel bike, when you twist the throttle, you have to do it gradually. There is a slight delay yeah. on the power, but with these, you can open it up straight out of the corner. It provides the torque and provides the pull as you need. Yeah, definitely. And you don't need to worry about it. You can just pin it and you're golden. But I mean, even running on that as well, you've got to think that sometimes when you're going around the corner, you want to have a bit of sort of slow release for the throttle mm -hmm. and then it, the power will slowly come in. I think there's going to be a lot of riders that will be surprised when they're going around the corner, used to putting the throttle full down and then slowly getting out. Well, not slowly, but like no, the, I know what you mean. the gradual power. I With this, it will just be instant. It, yeah, so. and it's the manual side of it as well, which is what's going to keep it interesting because yeah. a lot of old school diehard riders will not like the fact that you can just pin it out and you're gone. With this, you have got to do it because it's man, you've got to do it yourself. You've got to make sure you're in the right gear. So I think that's what's going to move a lot of people over from a fossil fuel burning yeah, bike absolutely. to one of these. So I'm, I'm really interested to see where this goes over the next few years. Yeah, I mean, hopefully we do see it in 2019 because mm. it's one where it's still quite a concept bike. Yeah, it's so it's not going to be released as it is in 2019. There's still going to be a bit of sort of development needed. So hopefully we do see it in 2019. If we don't, you know, I'd expect at least 2020 to mm -hmm. be released then. But I think we put it on here just because it's such a nice bike. And if it does come out in 2019, it's definitely going to be up there with 100%, sort of top bikes. So. 100%. So those are the top five uh, sports bikes, which we think anyway, are coming out for 2019. And ones to give your eyes on. So Alex, before anything, What's your favourite out of those? What are you looking forward to? I mean, to be fair, it's probably the Ducati. I know you're going to say that as well, so I sort of swept yeah, in there. Yeah, I'd be insulted if you actually asked me what mine yeah, is. Yeah, no, exactly. Know, but... So I think both of ours, then, in that case, I'll speak mm. for both of us and say it'll be the Ducati, because that's just insane. Can't deny I want to see the Super Next. Yeah. That's a big thing. But I think for both of us, there's going to be the V4R this time. It's oh, a quality no, bike. Absolutely. I mean, if you leave a comment below and let us know what your favourite Super Bike for 2019 is, the one you're going to be looking out for, whilst you're there, of course, leave a like and subscribe so you can get notified of our future content. Cheers for watching. Thanks.